Hey everyone, God bless you. Thanks a lot for tuning in. My reflection today, for your edification, I'm entitling Discerning God's Will for Your Life. In fact, pastors are often asked uh, by parishioners, especially by the young, Father, how can I know what God's will is for my life? We especially ask these questions when we're facing major crossroads in our life. Maybe we're finishing our education and we're wondering what job should we take? Or we're contemplating uh, getting married or becoming a monk or a nun and we're trying to figure out exactly how to know God's will in our life. It's a fantastic question uh, to ask, not just uh, for the young, but for every Christian to try to discern God's will. This is very wise. In general, it's simply a matter of asking. If I had a dollar for every time uh, someone has been asking me for help to discern God's will about this or that, and then I pose the counter question to them, have you prayed about it? Uh, and the answer was, no, Father, I haven't done that. I've been thinking about it. This is point one, less thinking, more praying. Ask and receive. Seek and and find. Knock, and the door will be open to you. This is the encouragement of our Savior in his basic teaching on prayer in the Sermon on the Mount. Make your request known to God. Include God in all of your decision making. Seek his will, and he'll speak. Now, it is true that sometimes it is not God's will for us to know God's will. <laughs> and those times are very difficult sometimes to accept. It is the case that sometimes when we're struggling to know, it just isn't good for us to know for a variety of reasons. There are many. Perhaps something is going to be revealed to us soon. Perhaps God wants us to obtain the great blessing of perseverance, of long suffering, of patient endurance, hypomony. Maybe that's what God wants. And he's going to reward you greatly with a clear revelation of his will in the future if you just persevere. I learned this lesson when I was a young man, and I've lived off the inheritance of this blessing from God ever since. I, I'm still benefiting from what God taught me in a drastic way when I was 19 years of age. When I was 19, I was at a point in my life, as many young people are at that time, where I was making important decisions about discerning God's will. I was making decisions about the fundamental questions of marriage and vocation. And I remember coming through a period of praying and asking God for clarification and not getting any, and really finding uh, myself without any answers and without any perceived certainty about what God wanted me to do. So I decided at the extremity of my uh, struggle, I decided that I was late one night going to open the scriptures, get on my knees and read the scriptures, praying for the Lord's voice to guide me straight through until I had some sense of God drawing near to me and answering. Right? If we draw near to God, God draws near to us, the scriptures say. So I began, I think it was about 8.30 or 9 at night, and it was 9 o'clock, and I began reading passage through passage, chapter, book through book, through the scriptures. 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, midnight, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., about 2.30 a.m., I came upon a marvelous text. I was reading through that Solomonic text, Ecclesiastes, and I came to the seventh chapter. Let me just read it to you. It's a marvelous, marvelous text. I came to the seventh chapter and I was dumbfounded. I came to verses 13 and 14 and I read this. Consider the work of God for who is able to straighten what he has bent. That hit me like a ton of bricks in this context. Here I am struggling to discern God's will. My path doesn't seem straight to me. It's bent this way or that way. However, I decide 
the, the, the answers to the questions that are just before me is going to determine if I've been going left or right. Consider the work of God. Who can straighten what he has bent? Perhaps my confusion, my lack of understanding isn't actually my problem. It's actually a blessing, and it's actually something that God himself bent. Who is able to straighten what he has bent? In the day of prosperity, be happy. When you know God's will about the details and you feel great assurance about what is concerning you, be happy. But in the day of adversity... For me, that day was not knowing God's will when I felt I needed to in order to make the steps I needed to make. But in the day of adversity, consider this. God has made the one as well as the other so that man will not discover anything that will be after him. <laughs> Sometimes God arranges your life so that you can't know the future. You can't see what you're supposed to do. And it's his bent. That hit me like a ton of bricks. Peace descended upon me like a sweet rain. And I recognized at that moment that I wasn't going to get an answer to the question that I was posing God. That he wanted me, in fact, to move into the next few months of my life, confident that he was guiding me, and that the uncertainty itself, the not knowing his will at that moment, was his will. It didn't mean that I was away from God. It meant that I was in the middle of his will. But in his wisdom, he decided not yet to answer me. He did answer me. A few months later, he answered me. He showed me what to do. I made the decision, and I've been living with it happily ever since. So this is my uh, encouragement to you as you're seeking God's will in your life. Ask him. This is the right thing to do. Seek God's will constantly. Ask him for guidance. And you'll find, most of the time you seek, you find, you knock, the doors open to you. If he doesn't answer, consider that it may be his will that you not know at this moment. He wants you to persevere. He wants you to trust him with the details of your life, that he'll show you what to do at the right time. You'll know that also because you'll have a sense of peace. It's like he's, the Lord's patting you on the head when you struggle to that point. He's patting you. He's saying, son, trust me. I'm not going to answer the question you're, an you're asking right now. It's not a good time for you. Now consider something else too. It also may be that you aren't able to discover God's will, um, not because you haven't asked and not because it's God's will for you not to know, but it may be God's will for you to know, but you aren't asking in the right way, with the right disposition, and therefore can't discern the will of God. Now, stay with me for a moment on this thought. Think of the many times that Jesus said something like this. This is from the 11th chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel, verse 15, where the Lord Jesus says, Let him who has ears to hear, let him hear. Jesus is giving teaching. Uh, some of his instruction is not being well understood. It's not being well uh, appreciated by those who are listening to him. And his counsel to them is to, to listen better. He's not saying those who have physical ears need to hear. This is not about physical hearing. Everybody there had ears, physical ears, but they weren't listening with other ears. This is about listening with the ears of your heart, the ears of your spirit, the ears of your mind. So if you want to discern God's will and you aren't getting it, it may be that you're not listening the right way. Maybe you are listening but not really engaging your mind. You need, you need to listen with your reason. You need to be serious about your life and think deeply. But thinking is not the solution. You have to go beyond reason. Jesus isn't just asking you to engage your reason. He's asking you to have a disposition of attentiveness, spiritual attentiveness in the heart. You want to rely on him in faith and have your heart soft and open to hear his will so that you can do it. So you're asking for God's will, but you're asking it not with a stubborn will of what you want, right? If you have a stubborn will of what you want, and you're only open to receiving certain, you're looking for a confirmation of what's really your will, you're not going to hear a thing. And you're not, certainly not going to get any sort of peace that this is God's will, in fact. And that won't be able to support you in the decisions that you have to make. No, instead, humble yourself. 
open the ears of your soul. Then your whole body will be full of light. Thinking is not what brings your body to be full of light. Cleaning the eye of your soul, having a disposition in your heart of listening and being like Samuel the prophet, speak, Lord, for thy servant listens. That's the disposition in which you can receive the word of God and in its power, know the will of God and be even empowered to do it is to hear that kind of way. Just think of the parable of the sower. Only of the four seeds, the four the four uh, soils that receive the seeds, only one of the four received the seed the right way. The seed is the word of God. The soil is the heart of man. It's only the, the, so, the soft soil that receives the seed and nourishes it that bears fruit and lasts. And that's what you want to be. You want to be able to listen to God that way. Then you'll hear his voice. Then you'll know what's coming. It may be, in fact, that you're just not listening the right way. This is why so many could physically hear Jesus, but not spiritually hear him. Or in his language, many are called, few are chosen. Few respond, a minority respond to his word because there aren't ears to hear. There's not a softness of heart. There's not a true faith uh, and humble belief. If you do these things, dear ones, if you approach the pursuit of God's will for your life, this is the path to knowing it and having the certainty uh, that what you're doing is your Father in heaven's will for your life. God strengthen you. Patristic Nectar Publications is pleased to present a nine-part lecture series entitled, My Life in Christ, The Life and Teaching of St. John of Kronstadt. This series consists of two parts. The first consists of four thematic lectures given in 2022 by Father Josiah Trenum to the St. John Chrysostom Catechetical School in Riverside, California. The second part of this series are five talks given by His Grace Bishop Basil of Wichita to a men's retreat in Kansas in 2008. St. John of Kronstadt, the wonder worker, served God in Russia during the second half of the 19th century and fell asleep in Christ in 1908. His life, miracles, and teaching have been cherished by believers as God's love gift to the church and to the world on the cusp of the 20th century, the most violent century in the history of humanity. These lectures and discussions reveal the beauty of a life lived supremely in and for Jesus Christ, the Lord. For these and other available titles, please visit our website at patristicnectar.org. <laughs>